Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be focusing on one of these underused weapons that is pretty good in multiplayer and has a lot of potential when it comes to Warzone, you don't see very often, and that is the Scar Assault Rifle. So we're going to talk about pretty much everything you need to know about this weapon. Hopefully by the end of the video you have a better idea on how you can make the perfect class setup for your own individual play style. Enjoy the video, learn something new, please do me a favor, hit that like button. Goal in today's video is 3,500 likes. If you're brand new, want to find your way back for more Call of Duty content, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. Let's get into it. The first thing we're gonna take a look at is recoil patterns. And the first thing we can see right here is these are all with the 20 round mag. Right here, you can see the base scar goes up and a little bit to the right. And then for this one, I added three stability attachments because as we know, stability attachments help with that idle sway, which lead to a little bit more consistent recoil patterns so that you can get a similar result over and over and actually visually see what is happening with the individual attachment. So what I did is I added the three stability attachments. You can see it kind of helps out a little bit. Then we got the muzzle brake with those three attachments. It's helping out. Compensator, almost like the most goaded attachment when it comes to recoil control. Then we have the 17.2 inch barrel with those three attachments combined with the 20 inch barrel. And when you look at these very closely, it almost looks like there's no difference between these two. The one on the left is the 17.2 and then the 20 inch. It almost looks identical. Um, and when comparing this in game, I really didn't notice the difference. So one of the main reasons why you would pick the 20 inch barrel is primarily for a little bit of range and a little bit of bullet velocity, which for the most part, isn't gonna matter in this particular large scheme of things as we end up talking about the attachments. Um, we got the commando foregrip, again, a top tier attachment, generally for rifles, just because it tends to help them out quite a bit compared to how the recoil works on a lot of the SMGs, you tend to go with the Merc. Merc, still doing pretty good work here, obviously going to help with the hip fire control, but you're really not going to use the scar up close. As we talk about the damage profiles and the overall TTK, I'm going to make some recommendations on changes they can make to this weapon so that it would be within the meta, but not overpowered. They tend to either overdo it or underdo it, and they don't really have a good idea on how, what it takes to balance the weapons properly so that they would still be usable, but people would still more than likely use what they like now. But at least you'd have the option. So it's not like I'm going to use a scar and everyone in the lobby is going to be using the Kilo, the Amax, the M4, or whatever. They have a little bit more weapon diversity, which in my opinion, I think Warzone desperately needs. And then I decided to include the bipod in here. And this one's specifically for crouched, even though that's not really practical in my opinion. Obviously, that has no downsides. You could go prone and you'd get even more recoil reduction. But at the end of the day, how many people are actually going to be running a bipod unless you're just posted up and you know the right camping spots where the ledge is high enough where you can still see over it while crouched. Um, but when you're standing, obviously, you know, it's kind of one of those things. It's like, where the heck do you position yourself unless you're literally out in the open? Because most of the objects are built for chest height so that when you're standing fully, you'll be able to ADS. And then though a lot of those scenarios, you could just mount up and you'd probably get the same benefit of a bipod. Um, operator. So right here, we can see the operator is helping out. This one doesn't have a ranger. It's one of the few rifles in the game that just doesn't have a ranger uh, grip. Uh, it has all those other, you know, underbarrel launchers and stuff like that, but it doesn't have a ranger foregrip. Um, you can see right here, you're not really getting much more out of the operator compared to the Merc. And you can see these lines are fairly consistent. And I think a lot of that has to do with the stabilization there rubberized rear grip. I still ended up with three stability attachments. TAC laser was the main one that was on for all of the different tests. Then we got the collapsible and I swapped the colors. So you can see that the, the base scar is still going to have a little bit less recoil than the collapsible. Not as much as I thought it would. And you can see the general spacing on these. The collapsible is going to be extending that recoil out, but not a lot, but definitely it's significant compared to some of these other better setups that we'll take a look at in a little bit with the lowest recoil option basically stacking all the ones that perform the best in these recoil categories. And then with a suppressor, obviously if you get rid of the compensator, you gotta put on a suppressor and then iron sights. Cause obviously these ones, more than likely if you're gonna be using them for Warzone, you're gonna put on a holographic or a VLK, which is more in these type of line. But if you're gonna be playing multiplayer, a lot of times you could just get away with using iron sights because not everything's going to be on these long. The maps just aren't that long. So the next thing we're going to talk about is damage profile and how this weapon fits into the meta. So this weapon is pretty unique in the fact that it's not a 5.56 five, weapon and it only has two damage profiles. Normally the weapons that aren't 5.56 five, have multiple damage profiles. You got the limb, the stomach, the upper chest, and then you have headshots. This one behaves a lot like a 5.56 five, weapon where pretty much the only extra damage you get is from landing a headshot. Um, but obviously it falls in the 
the other category with like the AK and a lot of those other weapons like the Odin where they have multiple damage values, this one just doesn't have it. In addition to that, it only also has one damage drop off. It goes from its first damage profile up to about 30-ish meters, and then it drops off to its second damage profile. And then when you do the math on those damage values, you can see that not a lot changes from one range to the other. So now let's go ahead and take a look at that comparison. So right here, it's a headshot, 56 damage, chest, limb, so pretty much everywhere but the head, you're gonna get 35 damage, um, even you know, regardless of the barrel, just the first damage range. If you do the math into 100, we can end up with two to three shots to kill. Um, obviously, the two shots is headshots, and that's at pretty much any range as we'll see once we jump over here. Shots to kill with war zone, which is 250 total damage. It's five to eight shots. If you only land headshots, it will be a five shot to kill and eight shots if you land anywhere else on the body. Second damage profile is only 51. You do the math against these numbers. 32 for the less limbs and chest. It's only a three a three difference there. Um, and then we got shots to kill, two and four. It has an extra bullet here. So the TTK does drop off pretty hard in multiplayer because it has a slow fire rate. When we get to the shots to kill within Warzone, you can see it's still five to eight. So the only real thing you're looking to solve for here is bullet velocity, since range really isn't all that important. Um, and usually the good number to have is around 1,000 meters per second. Um, and we're, we're gonna take a look at that particular aspect as well. So one of the first suggestions I have, obviously I'm gonna have multiple suggestions on how they could tweak this weapon, but one of the first suggestions I have is for them to up this value to 36. Uh, even if it changed the headshot multiplier to like 58 or something like that, it wouldn't matter because at the end of the day, when you do the math here, it'll still end up dealing the same amount of damage in terms of number of shots to kill, but it would lower the shots to kill for, for up close distance to seven, and that would make it much more viable as we're gonna see it's not great up close. It has kind of this long range distance that just is always the same, which is where it's strong suit is, and we'll talk about that. So I think they could change that, change this up by one value, and it would drop the shots to kill from eight to seven, and it would be a little bit more viable, especially with this low fire rate and small ammo capacity. So now let's see how these numbers translate to overall time to kill. So to put the graph together and make it look as clean as possible, I went to truegamedata.com. It's a great place where you can compare different stats of weapons and stuff like that. Uh, I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description. And what I have did is I've added a little additional detail to it so that we could talk about certain aspects. What we're going to look at here is there's a bluish line or this one that goes all the way to the top is for the Kilo 141. Um, and you can see kind of how the damage profile is at 49 meters. It drops off. And then all the way up to about 87 meters, it drops off, and then that's it. It doesn't drop off again. When we talk about the AMAX, which is another popular meta weapon, we got all the way up to 35 meters, drops off to 51 meters, drops off 68 meters, and then drops off and it doesn't drop off again. And this is the pattern that the SCAR should more closely resemble because of its ammo type. It's not that 5.56, which typically has two damage drop offs. So when we're looking at the SCAR, you can see the SCAR is this pinkish purple one. It goes all the way across at about 730 milliseconds uh, time to kill. And obviously the higher the number moves up, the slower the time to kill, the more shots required to kill, and it's just less effective as these numbers get higher and higher. And the lower, it's complete opposite. The faster, more melty the gun will feel, especially at closer quarters. The AMAX is basically undefeated almost, except maybe the AS Val beats it out just a little bit now up close, but you end up with another ammo situation. So we can see right here, for the scar from zero all the way up until infinity, no matter how far you shoot the bullet, as long as it can register, you will deal the exact same amount of damage and all those shots land, the theoretical time to kill will not change. So what is the issue with the scar? It really comes down to damage per mag. And I think this is the huge outlier here. Um, when we look at the AMAX, if you're only landing upper chest shots, it does 1900 damage or so with a 45 round mag. The SCAR, the largest magazine it can have is 30, and you only deal a little over a thousand damage. Even if every bullet was a headshot, which is incredibly unrealistic, um, especially at certain ranges, its damage output would be 1680, and that is equivalent to the Kilo 60 round mag, whereas if you do the damage output within the first damage range or so, it ends up being 1680. So it's like you're getting the, the, the quality of damage output of how many people you can actually down within one magazine. This allows for a lot of damage and allows you to down multiple people. That's why the Kilo has been so successful. 
And one of the reasons why um, people aren't using the 100 round mag, 60 is plenty. And I think with the SCAR, we'd experience the same thing if we bumped it up to 45 or even 50. 50 might be a little excessive, but 45, it'd be right in the ballpark of where the kilo's at, right around 16, 50 or so. It'd still be a little bit less, I think, but right there is where it's at. Then at the further damage drop off, you can see that they're still out beating the, uh, the SCAR by, uh, by considerable margins. And then once we get at these really long ranges where it's a little bit harder to hit shots, the SCAR still has the same 1,000 and it's still getting beat out by the Kilo and the Amex. And that's really why we're not seeing the SCAR in the meta. Right here, what we're looking at right at 49 meters, it's better than the Kilo from 49 meters all the way on as long as you can land the shots. It's just that in reality, even if you land every bullet, you're only going to be able to down about three players, which is 750. Maybe, you know, maybe four if you manage to land every single bullet, you throw some headshots in there. But 100% accuracy is just not realistic. And I think that's why we'll never see it as part of the meta until that is resolved. Because in addition to it having a small magazine, the, the it's a little bit more unforgiving in the recoil department. Kilo is just way easier, faster fire rate, easier to adjust your shots. So it's even being double penalized here. I know that if it had a 45 round mag, I would be using it for the engagements here, and then I'd probably be pairing it with like an MP7 of some kind, so I can have my MP7 for close to medium, and then the scar would be that medium to long, and you'd have a little bit more forgiveness when you miss shots just because your magazine is able to keep up with it. Um, now let's go ahead and look at the class setups and how they line up for this individual weapon. So these are the three class setups lined up pretty well. If you want the lowest recoil, the attachments are here. And then I went ahead and put the bullet velocity and the overall aim down sight speed. And this is in line with the Kilo. The Kilo is usually the best class setup for the Kilo is right around 410-ish, um, depending on if people swap out one attachment here or there, but it's usually around 410. And when we had the Bruin Meadows around 430, 440 somewhere in there depending on the attachments you use so the scar is not as slow as people want to make it out to be the problem is that when you solve for the recoil it does slow down quite a bit especially it would be slow for multiplayer but with this balance of attachments you can see that you can get a reasonable bullet velocity and that's not really the issue with this weapon it really comes down to being able to have enough ammo and a little bit more kick than most people are accustomed using because most people just tend to use the lowest recoil weapons because they're easiest to be most accurate you could put on a lightweight suppressor because obviously the range doesn't matter but the problem with putting on a lightweight suppressor it would mess up your range which really isn't an issue here maybe in multiplayer it would be but when it comes to actually uh, the bullet velocity, it would tank the bullet velocity significantly. So this would be like a rare case where it could work. And this wouldn't be an issue if the game was hit scan like the brand new sniper rounds. But overall, uh, I think this ends up being a really solid class. You can see the recoil for 20 bullets is very nice, very clean. Basically halves the recoil, almost gives you the lowest recoil option, but not quite as much and you still get the suppression there. And then we have multiplayer and this is a reasonable ADS speed for multiplayer. And it, even though the recoil is not gonna be as low as these other two examples, you don't really need the recoil to be that low in multiplayer. ADS speed is primarily one of those other things. And since the ranges are much shorter, the recoil control is a little bit less necessary in my opinion. That pretty much ends up being the class setups. I Hopefully you guys get a chance to have a little bit of fun with that. I think it's really only practical for Warzone in solos and duos is a little bit of a stretch, but once you get to trios, quads, it becomes very impractical. Could you use it if you're very skilled? Yes, but that doesn't mean it's practical. Um, it just, it needs, to, it needs a buff. And the two changes I'd recommend, like I said, increase the damage value by at least one point for the close range, and that would allow it to be a little bit more viable within Warzone, and or increase that magazine capacity so that you get a little bit more forgiveness if you miss shots, because right now you're penalized way too hard, especially when we compare it to the Kilo and the Amex. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, learned something new. If you did, please do me a favor, hit that like button. If you're brand new and want to find your way back for more Call of Duty content, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. Appreciate all the support. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.